You look different. Yeah, I can see my feet. <laughs> We've we had, had the, the baby. baby. It's happening. We're off to the hospital. Oh, it's just never ending at the minute. I hate the car journey. Oh, we're we gonna be coming back with a boy or a girl. And we're off. We have been in a little bubble all week, um, but we welcomed a little baby last Sunday. What did we have? It's been a whirlwind. It's been really nice to just take a bit of time for ourselves, have some yes. space. Uh, Rupert has been amazing. You'll see some clips shortly of him. Oh yeah, more from Rupert. We uh, we captured the moment he met his brother or sister for oh, the first <laughs> for the first time, and it was absolutely adorable. Yeah. But yeah, we've just been sort of getting used to having a toddler and a newborn all week. We didn't upload a vlog last Friday because it just all got a little bit too much. Yeah, we had said in a video that if we don't upload, it's probably because of the baby. That's not true. We hadn't actually <laughs> we had We actually it hadn't had it at that point. Um, we just wanted to take a week off. Yeah, but enough of all that. I'm sure you're all dying to know. So we had a little girl. A girl. Ah! We couldn't believe it. <laughs> When Jamie told me that it was a girl, I think our faces just said it all. Yeah. We just both looked at each other like, what? We were, Are you I, sure? I was so convinced it was a boy, just because I see Rupert playing with his older cousin so much. I'm just, in my mind, I can see Rupert and a younger brother. I think we were both convinced that we were having a boy. Yeah. But we are so thrilled. We're so happy. We're on cloud nine. Um, we've been getting to know her for the yeah. past few days and she's a little dream um we'll be doing her youtube debut in in just a second yeah she'll she'll make her first appearance yeah so in this vlog we thought we would take you through a very special 48 hours last weekend yeah um it all began with a lovely country walk in a forest we took rupert out for some fresh air Little did I know that I was actually in the early stages of labour on that walk. I think we joked a little bit in those clips. Yeah. That, is it coming? Is it not coming? And it happened the next day. <laughs> yeah, and before we knew it, we were in the car, heading to the hospital, um, and then bringing our daughter home. Yeah. And I was really, really lucky. I managed to have the birth of my dreams. Um, so we're going to show you a little bit of that, talk you through it, because I think it's so important to put positive birth yeah. stories out there and I remember when I was expecting Rupert it all just seemed like doom and gloom and um, so I think if you've had a really positive experience it's so nice to be able to get it out there. Let's take you back a few days to a very special 48 hours starting with us going on a little walk. Beautiful this is. Stunning. We decided to go for a little walk, get Rupert out of the house. I mean I'm doing anything now to get this baby out. Ooh. Oh Rupert I think I found the swing. Oh, look how pretty that is with the sun. Yeah. On the swing? Yeah. Let's do it. And just put your gloves on so you can hold the rope better. Like that, and then hold on to the rope really tight. With both hands. This is fun. Oh, don't show my bottom. <laughs> Stunning, honey. Lovely. Stunning. Wow. You get cheese. cheese. It'd be cool to be up there right now, wouldn't it? You, you think it's granddad? This is a bad look. Is it happening? <laughs> no, I, don't know. I feel like tonight could be the night. Oh my gosh, the pressure. Baby, baby. Turn you, you into. Doggy. Oh! <laughs> woof, woof! So there you go, I was making jokes about possibly being in labour yeah. on the walk. Turns out, I was. So I came home, that night I was up most of the night having contractions about maybe three every hour. Yeah. They were totally manageable at home, um, but I just didn't sleep. And then that sort of followed on into the morning. I can't remember what time it was, but we phoned the hospital, didn't we? Phoned the hospital at 10 o'clock. Was it 10? And I basically said, I'm having contractions every seven minutes. It's manageable at home, I'm comfortable, you know, what should we do? And they said, we'll stay at home. If you feel comfortable, if they it's start, the best place to be. Yeah, if they start to come a little bit quicker and faster, then give us another phone call. So 
yeah, I was just resting at home. You were running around like a maniac. I think at that point, because we've been planned for ages. We've had the bad bags packed. Well, Megan's had the bags packed. <laughs> um, but there's things like the car seat had been ready by the back door and the bags have been ready, but not in the car. So I was rushing around everywhere, getting all of that ready. I was just in the bedroom, like leant over the bed, had my dressing gown on, tried to get cozy, trying to get cozy. I had Rupert at one point climbing on my back running a forklift truck up and down my back. <laughs> Talk about the difference in like being in early stages of labour when you don't have a toddler versus having a toddler. Yeah, he was rubbing your back and was. it was really sweet. And then I finally got a few moments to myself. I brought the birthing ball down into the bedroom and I thought, I'm just gonna do some like side lunges. It's a position that I've seen um, sort of online in my hypnobirthing course, just to sort of get things moving, open up the pelvis, that sort of thing. So I was, on, I was on my birthing ball, giving it a few stretches, and all of a sudden I just felt the head descend. Mm. It was like a drop, and everything just got quite intense after that, and I messaged Jamie saying, we've got to it's go. Happening. Like, yeah. it, the, the pressure down there was so intense, but it's like that sensation that there was you just something. Knew. I just yeah. knew it was time to go. So that was that. I gave Rupert a huge cuddle. I got quite emotional, and I mean, he's two, but his emotional awareness is unbelievable he had no idea what was happening oh, but he yeah. turned to me and he said you can do it mummy and that just broke me i was in floods of tears and he and then he went okay i'm eating melon now bye bye <laughs> <laughs> so those words of encouragement from rupert are exactly what i needed they got me through the next few hours without a doubt as did this one here so we arrived at the hospital pool was ready everything was great now on to the good part but before we get there before we get there, um, I do just want to take a minute to talk to you about something that I was always planning on talking about in this video because I think it's really important. Um, and it's something that we've chosen to do second time around that we did very, very late with Rupert. And I think doing it this time around has massively, massively helped. So if, you're, if you've been watching our videos for a long time, you'll know that we're huge fans of a company called BetterHelp. And this video is in paid partnership with them. So BetterHelp are a website and an app that connect you to trained therapists to basically talk about anything. It could be, in my case, having just given birth to a child. Um, you could be going through grief, it could be family issues, mental health issues. Couples counselling. Couples counselling, whatever it is, they are there to help. This week I've been chatting to a therapist, just going through the motions of coming out of hospital, having a second child to deal with, and it's been amazing. Feeling more comforted that these things are normal that I'm going through and the things that you're experiencing are normal. If you're going through something and you, you may think that chatting to someone could help, then we've put all the details in the description below so you can click on the link and go and check them out. I mean, they've already helped over four million people. So we just wanted to mention that because we know that life can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes and we always want to share really helpful things to our subscribers. Sometimes you just need to have a chat with somebody, someone who's completely impartial. And that's what's great about BetterHelp, that there are counsellors all over the world. And it starts with a simple questionnaire and in most cases you'll be matched with a therapist within 48 hours. And from there you can schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you. So if you're looking to talk to a counsellor, please look at the description below. There's the links there or we'll put the link on the screen. Uh, you get 10% off your first month of therapy using our code. So where were we? Birthing pool was ready. Yeah. We were ready. Um, One thing I thought was a bit strange, we arrived at the hospital and they turned the bath on. Yeah. The bath is huge. It takes so long to fill up. It does take a while. I yeah. think, I seem to remember we had a conversation with someone. They said, do phone us up when you're on your way in so we can get the bath ready. It didn't take that long. Though. I remember that when we were walking through the doors of yeah. the hospital. So I gave them a ring literally downstairs two minutes before we arrived. Um, but everything went well. Yeah, it filled up fine. We had the most amazing midwife team to sort of help us through it all. They were brilliant. Um, but I remember as the bath was filling up, I had an almighty contraction and it, it went on for sort of two oh, and a yeah. half minutes and I started shaking. Um, yeah, it was huge. And I thought, I am just so desperate to get in the water. And as soon as I got in, it was just like, oh, instant yeah. pain relief. It was amazing. If you're considering having a water birth or if you're yeah in a position where you can have one, please do. It was so lovely. I seriously considered stripping off and getting my, <laughs> getting my shorts on, but I had left my, I'd left my bag in the car. What so you? I couldn't. It was either in my nuddy, which was not going to happen. <laughs> It was warm. It was so nice. It was really, really lovely. Oh, someone's Ooh. making some noises. Can you hear someone? 
she, she might be getting hungry, might have to pause this and then go back to it. Um, but yeah, so we, we were in the pool at 12.30 midday and contractions were non-stop. There was pretty much, I mean, there was a couple minutes in between every now and again, but it just seemed to like, get really, really intense quite quickly. And then after maybe an hour, maybe 45 minutes of being in the, in the pool, I was kind of in the same position, stationary. Uh, I did like my first involuntary push, mm. like it just naturally sort of came. Um, but it became apparent that maybe I needed to move around a bit. Things, my waters hadn't broken. So things were descending, but there was no sign of like the head yet or anything like that. So the midwife suggested that I step out of the bath, which I was dreading. And as soon as I got out, the contractions were 10 times more intense. Like I can't tell you how lovely the natural pain relief was of just being in the water. So I'd already made the decision to have a water birth and obviously that limits the amount of drugs that you can take. Mm -hmm. You're allowed gas and air, which I had, which for me doesn't really make any difference whatsoever, apart from makes you a little bit giddy. You kept on cracking jokes. It was actually quite funny. <laughs> and whenever you'd stop, like there was a slight smirk on your face as if you were about to burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is quite comical. You're in so much pain and then a contraction stops and then it's like, oh, this is, I'm okay now. <laughs> we were singing to music. Oh yeah, we were. Oh, I was asking if it was Alicia Keys on or someone else. Yeah, and then it, it wasn't. It ended it was... up being Whitney. And then the whole room was like, oh, I want to dance <laughs> with somebody. We were all like humming along, saying, what's this, oh, what's this song? <laughs> humming, it was like through the verse and then like getting to the chorus. Oh, it's dance, dance with somebody. With somebody. Um, so yeah, it was, it was all very relaxing, loved the water, um, gas and air was fine, but after a while I just gave up on it. So yeah, after a short period of time in the water, it became apparent that um, my waters hadn't broken yet, and I'd done my first involuntary push, and the midwives thought I needed to sort of move about a bit, so they asked me to climb out of the bath, which I was absolutely dreading, because as soon as I stepped over the bath, I had a contraction and it was 10 times more painful. You um, went straight down and squatted on the floor. Straight down, squatted on the floor and I was just like, ouch. I thought it was gonna happen onto the floor. <laughs> but that's all it took. Yeah. So her head um, managed to get around the pelvic bone just in that one movement. And then the midwives chuckled and said, okay, great, you can get back in the bath now. Yeah. <laughs> so I jumped back in um, and that's when the pushing really started. And I was going for probably about an hour, over an hour. Definitely over Yeah, I think hour. so. I think we arrived at 12.30 in the yeah. afternoon um, and baby, she was born at 2.40. Yeah, just over two hours, but the real pushing was probably just over an hour? Just over an hour, yeah. I was actually glad that the pushing had arrived because I was so sick of the feeling of like contractions and not pushing. And then about 45 minutes before she was out, I really started to get quite demoralized because my waters hadn't broken. I was not only pushing the baby out, I was also pushing the sack out. So it was just mm. like, it was a lot, like there was just so much pressure and I felt like I was almost f like fighting an uphill battle because there was so much that I needed to push out. So I started asking if they'd consider breaking my waters and thankfully they said, let's just see how you get on over yeah, the, the next, next like, few. few. And it was the second to last contraction. My waters went, and then she followed straight away after that. Which happened with Rupert. Yeah. Rupert, the waters didn't break till, well, they basically broke it right at the last minute, didn't they? Yeah. And then it was like the neck contraction, or it happened yeah. very quickly after that. So I feel as though that must be something with that, like yeah. trying to push out a water balloon mm. as well as a baby. But Jamie was amazing, so we'd already planned for Jamie to pick the baby up and sort of guide it to the surface of the water. So that was your job. Mm. And also to tell me what we'd had. Yeah. So she came out, the relief was just like instant. I was like, oh my gosh, I literally couldn't believe that I'd done it because I was making some horrendously loud noises towards the end. Like, I can't do this. <laughs> I thought she was gonna float up. She kind of sunk away from me yeah. as I was going to pick her up and then picked her up and her cord was between her legs. Yeah. So again, I couldn't tell what it was. The midwife kind of took her from me, moved the cord out of the way. And then we just both looked at each other and were like, it's a girl. Yeah, you were still the first person to tell me. Like, yeah. I didn't look, I just kind of like closed my eyes. I said it's a girl and I was just, I couldn't believe it. I remember seeing Jamie's face and it was just like this. He was like, it's a girl. And we were just so over the moon. Then you happy. cuddled with her for what, like 15 minutes? I was 15-20 minutes yeah. with the core still attached. 
Yeah. Um, because it was still pulsing away. Yeah. Um, and then I got to cut the cord. Yeah, you did. Which I did that. Uh, and then you just sat in the bath for ages with her. Yeah. Like, she was calm, I was calm. So, yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better birth, really. Mm. I was very, very thrilled. So, yeah, it was time to get out. You had skin on skin with her yeah. in the chair for a while while I had to do all the lovely afterbirth stuff. I know, we're gonna show you to everyone very soon. So that's that, like it was that quick. And we asked them straight away, we were like, do you think we might be able to go home tonight? And they mm. said, yeah, if all's okay with the checks, we can do you a fast discharge in six hours. We were like, wow, we're gonna they be were home like, You can leave tonight. about nine o'clock. But because of that, and because we kind of left Rupert in somewhat of a bit of a rush, yeah. I felt like I wanted to go back yeah. home to put Rupert to bed, um, just so that he saw us before, I don't know, going to sleep and wondering where mummy and daddy was. So I actually left around six, six uh, got home, had a little bit of dinner at home as well, and then put Rupert to bed. And no one, we'd obviously told family about the baby, but we hadn't told, we had asked him not to tell Rupert. So I got him into bed and we read a few stories and then I explained to him that uh, mummy had gone to the hospital and baby had come out of mummy's mm. belly. Um, and I think it's recorded and it's, it was something that will keep forever because he was so, so sweet about it. He kind of was lying in his bed and he's got some rockets on the roof. And he just looked at the rocket and he went, give baby rocket? And then I was like, yeah, we could do that. And then he grabbed his panda, which he is like obsessed, obsessed with. with, inseparable. Um, and he went, he picked it up, walked out of his room into our bedroom here and then put it in the snow just here. I said, baby, have my panda. What are we doing, Rubes? Give it in baby's bed. You gotta put it in baby's bed. Okay. Oh, that Rupert is so sweet. Are you sure you don't need those pandas? No. Give it for baby. Give it to the baby. Oh, Rubes, you sweetie. Baby happy. You will make baby happy. Yeah. Right, and tomorrow morning we'll come in here and see the baby? Yeah. So he was really, really sweet and really excited to wake up the next day and come and see the baby. Yeah. Um, but also, with he's been non-stop asking for cuddles. Yeah. Um, he gets quite upset if he doesn't have a cuddle. Yeah. So we're trying to manage that at the moment because he's like a bit rough with her. Um, he just... Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> he's a bit rough with her. Like. What were you going to say? Did you think you said the name? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I think it's time to bring her in. Okay, let me go get, get, get her. <laughs> Look! Hello! Look at all that hair! Looking very pink, just waking <clears throat> up. So everyone, this is Poppy. This is Poppy Alexandra Colvin. Rupert was always going to be Poppy. We've loved the name Poppy. Loved the name for ages. It's the Norfolk flower, or the flower of Norfolk. It's the national flower of Norfolk. And also, we may have dropped a hint that if it was a girl, she would be called Poppy in our Baby 2 reveal video. Oh, yeah. When we were driving in the car, we went to the poppy fields. We picked one poppy and put it into the car. So there were hints along the way that if it was a girl, she would have been called Poppy. And the initials, which we mentioned not that long ago in a video, that the initials would be a vintage game, and that was Pac-Man. Pac-Man! So Poppy Alexandra Colvin. So her middle name is after her gran, so my mum. My mum's called gran. Alexandra, so you're named after your gran. And also, she was born on Sunday, which was Remembrance Day. Yeah. So. So obviously the, the symbol for Remembrance Sunday is the poppy. Because um, we were toying with one of the girls' names for mm. a little while. We almost jumped ship. So we were going back and forth, back and forth between the two. But we thought, no, it's, it's almost been decided for us, the fact that she's also come on Remembrance Sunday. Mm. And the whole nation were wearing poppies. And it was so funny because we got home and we told your parents her name. And your dad said, that's so strange because I just planted some poppy seeds yeah, in the yeah. field outside. We've been scattering wild flowers and um, he just planted loads of poppies. So it was meant to be. It was totally it meant was. to be. And you were seven pounds exactly. Look. <laughs> Hello. She looks just like Rupert. We love you. Oh. And we couldn't be happier to have you in our family, Pops. No. So we've got Roops and Pops. Rupop. They're going to start a band. Called Rupop. Rupop or... 
Puppet? No, no what was the... the... The Rat Pack. Oh yeah. The Rack Pack. So rat not pack. Rat Pack, the Rack Pack. R-A-C, P-A-C, yeah. J-A-C and M-A-C. The Rack Pack. Not Back, Sack and Crack. That was... <laughs> that was a joke from a long time ago, wasn't it? We love you. You've got lots of YouTube auntie and uncles. So bear with us over the next few weeks. We're going to be filming this crazy journey that we're on. Um, we might be able to get vlogs upon a Friday. We might not for the next few weeks. They we're might just... be a little bit shorter. They might be a yeah. bit more raw. Um, but please stick with us. Head over to our Instagram for more like daily updates to see how we're getting on. Just a little reminder. Yeah. This is going up on Friday. Do you know what tomorrow is for them? Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. To you. It's Happy my birthday on Saturday. Mm. Saturday the 18th. A week apart. Yeah. My little Scorpios. Mm. I've got a Scorpio child and a Leo. Both quite fiery. <laughs> fiery little animals. Nonsense. You don't believe in any of it, do no. you? It's okay. I'm a Virgo. I'll keep everything calm. So hopefully, just stay tuned, we'll insert a clip after this, we've got to wait until Rupert gets back from school, but I'm sure you'd all love to see Rupert with Poppy, because he's absolutely adorable with her, so enjoy Rupert and Poppy cuddles, and we shall see you whenever we see you next. Thank you everyone, take care. Thanks for watching, bye bye. bye. Hey, what are we, who are we going to go meet? Baby. The baby, and who are you taking to come and see the baby? What, Teddy? My doggy. Your doggy? Come on then, you have a look behind, behind that door. Go have a look, go have a look. Funny. 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 Look who's here. Funny. Funny. You found him. And he's snuggled up in Daddy's arms. Just turn that side light on. <laughs> Do you want to climb in bed and have a cuddle? I give my doggy for baby. Oh, oh that's so, so kind, nice. darling. Oops. Over. Oops. I will go up. Rupert, would you like to climb up here and give the baby a little kiss on the head? Just sleeping at the moment. Can you remember what we're calling the baby? I hold it. Yeah, come on, let's you go for a cuddle. Me. You can hold it with Daddy. I'm in bed. Yeah, climb in bed. Do you want to have a look? Can you climb in bed? Oh, look at little hands, Rupert. Oh, she's opening her mouth, trying to say hello. Look at her little hands. I hold it. Yeah, climb in bed. Let's have a cuddle. Yeah. Do you want a little cuddle? Cause you can you can hold her on your chest. Hold her with both hands, Rue. Put her hand behind her head. That's a nice cuddle. Mm. She likes that. And give a little kiss on the head. Aww. Can you say bye-bye? <gasps> Wave your hand. Bye-bye, everyone. Say like and subscribe. We'll leave that for Rupert. <laughs>